Good morning, um, saints of God. We are eternally grateful for His mercy and grace. It's been one week of learning why we must know God, why we must know God as we delve more and more into the thing. Today, I want to just um, hit on a particular point of why we must know God. And it has to do with holiness and consecration. Holiness and consecration. Like we've learned several um, throughout the week, you become most likely who you spend time with. I've seen um, people follow men of God to the point that they dress like the man of God. They cut their hair like the man of God. And they operate in the gifts of the man of God that they follow. This is a spiritual principle. The aura of the ones that you move with most likely will rub off you. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 20 verse 7. um, One of the books of Moses. uh, It says that sanctify yourselves. Or... Other scripture says, Consecrate yourselves therefore, and be ye holy, for I am your God. So it talks about consecration and sanctification and holiness. And we were created in the image and the likeness of God. The book of Genesis makes us understand. You recognize that likeness means you have the attributes or the nature or the similarity of the nature of that person. And God says that he is holy. He is holy. So in our bid to know God or why we must know God, we must recognize that holiness in experience, we are able to know God in your experience. You don't struggle and you don't feel guilty about the addictions because the addictions have dropped off. This is one of the main reasons why you should do that. And most times people have the idea that holiness has to deal with just avoiding sex, especially if you are a young person. But it goes beyond that. It is a lifestyle. Just as prayer is a lifestyle, holiness is also a lifestyle. And we can clearly see that in the book of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus went head on with the spirit of religion thereby talking about the ways in which we should live the bible says in verse 1 of matthew 5 he says that he went up to the mount and he set his disciples unto him and he began to teach it's a popular chapter where we see the beatitudes but when it comes to verse 21 still as he continues preaching this is what he said he said you have heard that it was said of them of old time thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment but i say to you so he's he's giving a a revelation of what uh, it is that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. So he's talking about our tongue, what we speak with our tongue. And uh, hatred for one's brother is equated to murder according to what Christ is saying. The next verse 23 says that therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and remember that thy brother had ought against thee leave the gift before the altar and go thy way first be reconciled to your brother and come then offer thy gift your offering or your gifts before god accounts for zero if you have a grudge if you have um something against your brother you do not love your brother the bible says god is love and love is the highest spiritual class that you can ever attain the bible says faith hope and love and the greatest of this is love 
through the same scripture we know this so loving your brother is looking at the weightier matter of why are you arguing with him what is the bitterness go and reconcile with your brother before you even come and give your gift to god this will break the theology of many this would send and scatter uh, what is existing because that's how the spirit of religion operates it deceives you that you are doing the right thing but uh, god gives a higher revelation again christ is speaking he says that uh, i'm jumping to verse 26 of chapter 5. he says that very rarely i say on say that shall by no means um, come out then then he says something powerful in 27. you have heard that it was said by them of the old time thou shalt not commit adultery but i say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to last after her had committed with her adultery in his heart this is a powerful powerful saying many people assume that okay uh, it's when i have sex outside the borders of marriage whether i are single or not that is when you have committed a sin but jesus pushed it a, a notch higher he said that if you look at a woman to last after her you have already committed in your heart so the position of holiness is in your heart first and it reflects in your actions as you get to know god in experience you would want to love and cherish the relationship beyond these things beyond hurting beyond uh, 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 contravening the laws of god and you want to please him not out of uh, rules and regulations but out of the love that you have for him and these are the set rules many people do not like rules but now even today in COVID times it's not every country you can visit because uh, you need to have fulfilled certain requirements if you haven't you do cannot enter that country so if even the earth is doing this how much more God we go through heaven by reason of the sacrifice of Christ Jesus and holiness the bible says for god dwells in unapproachable light this unapproachable light we glean from this through the word of god and by obeying his his commandments because we know in psalm 119 that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path so you are able to reflect what you are learning and what you are experiencing in your terms of your knowledge of god job said I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look after any woman lustfully. So Job caught this revelation of Christ Jesus that his hands, his eyes, his mouth. So you need to be careful what you say. You need to be careful what you see. You need to be careful what you hear. And this will reflect in the fact that you are separate for the master's use. You are different from the master's use. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Verse, verse 14, I mean, there's a description for a Christian. It says that who gave himself for us, he's talking about Christ Jesus, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, people zealous of good works. One thing that struck me about this verse is that the Bible is calling Christians peculiar. You are strange to the world because you say that I don't have sex outside the borders of my marriage i am still a virgin i do not listen to ungodly music the 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 bible calls you strange in that respect because that's how people will see you so if you are a christian these are some of the things that as you grow in your work with god you should be able to do by the help of the spirit and not by your strength alone Hebrews 1 9 says, Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity, therefore the Lord thy God has anointed thee. Anointing is holy and precious, so it comes on those who have loved and have followed and chased righteousness and hated iniquity. Unfortunately, people are loving iniquity in our days and calling what is right wrong and what is wrong right. Dear brethren, 
as you want to enjoy the benefits of living a holy and a chaste life you know that you must live in a in a certain in a particular direction one of the clear directions and the clear benefits is that you are anointed with fresh oil i pray for you that in your experience with god as you experience god on a day-to-day basis you shall live a holy life you shall be proud of calling yourself a christian showing forth christ and his works and just as christ spoke on the sermon on on the on, on the mount with his disciples we shall also be able to live what he says you if you go to the matthew 5 you see a lot of things that christ said taking it a higher notch that he didn't come to abolish the law but he rather came to fulfill it i pray that we will fulfill all the requirements that god has set before us that we may enjoy truly experiencing god and moving in a deeper relationship with him god bless you and have a great day amen and amen